Perfect. And and maybe let, let's talk a little bit about, you know, what exactly does a risk practitioner do? You know, what, what is like the day-to-day -day, uh, things that you get up to? Um, I think there isn't a day-to-day. -day. I think uh, being a risk practitioner is really a very wide uh, canvas. Uh, you can have three uh, risk practitioners that do very different uh, things on a day-to-day -day basis. So regardless of, and they could be, by the way, in the same company, but they still do very different things. So at one end of the spectrum, you could have an actuary working on some uh, monitoring activities around uh, asset exposures. And then at the other end of the spectrum, you could have someone working on uh, overseeing how the health and safety risk is being managed in the same business. And those two people would still be reporting to the same CRO, but doing very different things. Uh, and I'm sure that we'll be having very different days in terms of the interaction and the stakeholders with which, uh, with which they are engaging on. Okay, perfect. And I mean, I, I, yeah. I suppose I would only add that to, to what I've said is that uh, for me, that, that variety is really what makes uh, the, the work working in a risk function interesting. Uh, I suppose I've been blessed uh, with uh, having a number of roles that have exposed me to very different activities ranging from uh, impact analysis uh, to lobbying and engaging with external stakeholders uh, to uh, working with the uh, regulators to explain why something is being done in a particular way to uh, then having conversations internally about how to address specific uh, regulatory issues. Okay, great. And I mean, you, um, what is the difference between enterprise risk management and risk management? <laughs> That's a very good question. Uh, I, I don't, I'm not sure, to be perfectly honest, if there is a textbook answer to that question, but I'll give you my answer to that question. Um, I think uh, risk management is, is exactly as the word uh, says, it's, it's about managing risks. I think it, it, it is regarded as a more traditional term that has two specific connotations. Uh, number one, it has the, the connotation of being um, about managing a specific risk uh, uh, that could be, for example, health and safety or could be anything to do with asset management. Um, uh, and I think that the key point then is in isolation of the rest of the risks that might exist in the business. And the second aspect of, um, uh, or second connotation, I should say, of uh, risk management that comes across in that distinction is really about the purpose of risk management. Uh, ERM brings a, a that holistic perspective of all risks uh, into consideration, uh, which is challenging, but nevertheless something that has to be tackled uh, and addressed as effectively as possible. Uh, but uh, enterprise risk management should also bring a different perspective about the purpose of risk management, which is about how risk management can add value to the business. So as opposed to just protect the, the, the business from bad things happening, which is obviously very important and it's perhaps a, the bread and butter of any risk function, but the, one should not stop at that where the, the purpose of risk management should be much wider and should include helping the business make uh, the right decisions to, to ensure that it achieves its, its objectives. Okay, because I mean, for a long time, the, the risk manager has kind of been seen as as the fun police, you know, uh, almost as someone who blocks business decisions, like saying, oh, we can't do that because it's too risky. We can't do that because it's dangerous. But I mean, in business, in order to create value, you need to take those risks. You need to do it. So I think your ERM tries to also look at the the upside um, instead of just focusing on on the downside. Um, but the question comes in: in how does technology now play a role? With, with risk management. I mean, you're a risk practitioner, but you've got a big interest in artificial intelligence. Is this a, because to some people it might seem as a quite a strange match. So where do the two come in? Is technology to help risk management or is risk management there to help the implementation of technology? That's a good question again. Uh, I, I think technology here, uh, or when I think about technology and risk management, I'm not thinking specifically about technology for the risk management function. I'm thinking technology for the business. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm then thinking that uh, 
one of the questions that the business should have when it's thinking about technology is what is going to be the impact on the risk profile of the business. And that's then a question that uh, the business and the risk management should consider jointly. So, so that's my kind of angle, if you want. Uh, it's, uh, I'm sorry, and, and perhaps the other point I would add to what I've said is that the, the, the flip side of that argument, if you want, is about the adoption of technology. And um, I refer to AI perhaps as a, as, a, as a convenience, if you want. I'm thinking here about adoption of technologies more, more generally. Um, and the question I think that many businesses have is how on earth do we then go about bringing those technologies that we can see outside into our business? And my, my proposition, uh, uh, if you want, is that if you start thinking about the impact that the technology might have on your risk profile, if you start thinking about governance and how your business operates, that's a way of starting the conversation. And I emphasize that uh, starting the conversation as opposed to ending the conversation, because how you end up the conversation uh, will really depend uh, on many, many things, uh, like, like, for example, what type of technology you're thinking about. But I think the challenge is sometimes how you start. Mm -hmm. so, so, so if I can give you a, a simple analogy, uh, the challenge sometimes is not uh, how to climb the Everest. The challenge is how you go from the base to the base camp, from which you then launch the, the final assault on the summit. Mm -hmm. so, so, so there is a, a similar challenge here. People are, I feel that people sometimes are looking at fintech that exists outside the, their own businesses as a little bit uh, uh, as, as the Everest or climbing the Everest. And uh, I'm kind of, my, my argument is that thinking about risk management, governance, operating models, that's a way of uh, pushing you towards the ascent. It may take you as far as uh, the base camp from which you can then launch the summit, uh, mm -hmm. but it's not the full answer. And I, I, I'm very clear about that because you know one cannot uh, answer that question uh, of you know what's the right technology for a business in isolation, whether AI in this process or that process is the right thing. But one can start those conversations if you start thinking about uh, risk management, governance, impact on risk profiles that you want to achieve, what you want to avoid, and, on, and similar things. So, so I like to think, uh, uh, if you want, uh, also about infrastructure. Uh, risk management is at one level a little bit of infrastructure for the business. And if you're bringing something very new, or relatively new if you wish, like uh, artificial intelligence, uh, some blockchain technology, you should be thinking about uh, your infrastructure and if that's uh, the right one. Okay, because I mean, th this is the thing is, we were taught, you know, as actuaries that, you know, models are, are useful, but they're always wrong and that we shouldn't use them as, as the final decision maker. You know, there should always be that, that human element that, that assists with it. But seeing the rise of AI and data science and this new thing, decision science, do you think that we're going to get to a stage where the models or the technology are going to be allowed to make, you know, certain decisions such as increasing premiums, you know, reducing excesses on certain products without the need of human oversight? Or do you think that that type of transformation is a little bit too far fetched at the given given time? I mean, to be honest, I don't think it, it can be ruled out. Uh, to be honest, I think also it might be happening in, in other areas. For example, I think it might be happening in uh, credit cards businesses. When you apply, I don't think there may be any, in all cases, there will be an individual looking at my decision. It may be fully automated. So I think uh, the, the key point uh, about your question uh, is, is for me about the target operating model that you want that, in which you want that technology to operate. And, uh, and, and it's not necessarily a, bina a binary question, and it's not necessarily a stable answer either. So, for example, at the moment, we have uh, the, the, the operating models tend to have a significant uh, human component that in many cases is perhaps not very, uh, it could be regarded as, as not the best use of anyone's time. 
Mm-hmm. So, so at the other end of the spectrum, you, you've got uh, operating, operating models where the decisions are fully out, automated. Now, as, as you clearly hint, and, uh, and, and, I, and I agree with you, it's, it, you know, one needs a fair amount of confidence on models to, 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 to rely on them. And uh, th- there are also operating models in the, mo- in, in the middle where uh, uh, models make decisions within certain parameters. And then outside those parameters, then they call in uh, or they alert a human to then consider the case and then uh, take a decision. So, uh, and, and obviously there are, there are also other scenarios where um, the, uh, the, uh, the AI tools are really acting as advisors uh, and just giving a much more sophisticated recommendation to, uh, to, to, the, to, the, to the analyst. You see that, for example, very often in, in the medical field, uh, in, in particular in radiography, uh, where you need a very keen and sharp eye and, uh, and being able to recall similar uh, shady pictures of uh, an ailment. Uh, uh, and my, my understanding, again, is that uh, you know, this is an area where AI tools are used to give the, the analyst, the, the radiographer, uh, a very sophisticated recommendation of what's, uh, what is it that you're looking at. Is it, is it for example, a cancer or is it just uh, something, a bit of water that uh, doesn't really, uh, it's not a matter of concern. So, so, so yes, uh, th- th- there might be scenarios in the future, perhaps much more prevalent today, where uh, decisions are automated, but I'm comfortable that uh, there are many operating models that sit between that and where we are today that could be equally beneficial for, for businesses and for individuals. No, yeah, I mean, I remember reading that in your, your article, you spoke about your, with the breast cancer, the percentage of, you know, the practitioner picking up and the percentage chance or the accuracy of the AI picking it up. And they were both like around 92, 95. But when you added them together, you got uh, a much higher, I think it was up to 99%. The, the interesting thing with that example is when we look at, let's say, the economics of having a practitioner, um, you know, they are expensive, all these analysts. Uh, especially in the medical profession, they are expensive. Whereas we need medical care around the world, specifically, you know, in poorer regions. And I mean, this is a big opportunity is if AI can can almost learn that next 5% or get increase that, that accuracy, we can then be, you know, helping people all over the world be able to pick up on these symptoms, you know, before they become a problem. So I 100% agree that, yeah, it's great to have the two together, but, you know, sometimes it, it will be cool to have the, the AI kind of making all the decisions. Um, and I think, is that maybe going to happen in the future? Or do you think there is maybe just a bit of an, an upper bound on the technology? Or like I said, is it too difficult to say at, at this time? I think it's both an, an upper bound. And I think uh, I think it, it, it's, it's, it's a case where the answer will vary between the many diff- different interactions that, uh, that we have. So for example, uh, it may be that it happens uh, earlier within a, within a you know, five or 10 year horizon for premium, but for medical uh, issues, it, it may take much longer, if not, because they are, they, the, the downside of getting it uh, wrong are very different. 